tip I'm talking to you about the spiritual language of emotion. But before I do that, I just want to mention that in my previous clip, I spoke about consciousness and the interconnectedness of everything through consciousness. I was trying to figure out a way to explain how we as human beings exist in that context. And I came up with this analogy, which I think is pretty neat. So if you think about an ocean, a vast body of water, I'm not talking about the molecules or any of the minerals in the water or any contaminants, just the body of water itself. And then you took some sort of container. I like the idea of one of those clear plastic hamster balls and you fill it up with ocean and you close it and submerge it in the ocean. And then what you have is ocean in a container in the ocean. And you repeat that many billions of times or however many of us there are. And that's the global community in the context of consciousness. We have an outline, we have a container that enable not, enables us to give context to the formless, direction to the formless, purpose to the formless, but we are the formless just in these containers and we are in the formless, okay? In this immeasurable substance. Now, how do we communicate with this immeasurable substance? We use the only uh, technique available to us, which is an immeasurable method, which is the human emotion. Okay, so the immeasurable speaks to the immeasurable. Human emotions cannot be observed. That has nothing to do, has nothing to do with the ability to put probes on people's brains or whatever and read brain activity or uh, hormones and all the rest of it. Our emotions cannot be observed. They are the only method that we have for communicating with consciousness. Okay, and I want us to remember that. That being said, I want to encourage you to treat the spiritual language of emotion as a language. So that means the spiritual language of emotion has its alphabet, its building blocks, if you like, its vocabulary, its grammar, its sentence construction, its pronunciation, handle it like a language. And that's the only way that you are going to be able to tell consciousness what you want it to do and find that you get the outcomes that you're seeking, okay? And remember, frequent use, a lot of practice is the thing that's going to make you proficient in this language and eventually fluent in this language. So let me give you an example. Imagine you went to a foreign country and you got into a taxi. You have a basic working knowledge of the native language and you say to the cab driver, please take me to the local hospital. Or at least you think you're saying that. And instead, he takes you or she takes you to a police station. You think, what am I doing here? I said, take me to the hospital. But no, you didn't because you didn't use the right words. Well, that's exactly what happens when we don't get the outcomes that we're trying to get through the conscious use of imagination. We are not using the correct words. Okay, so how can we start to understand this language? How can we start to use it? Well, we do that through engaging our subjective senses, which means the senses of sight, smell, hearing, taste, touch, and there are two others which I won't talk about in this clip. When we use those senses, we evoke emotions and those emotions are telling or communicating to consciousness what we are waiting to see happen in our physical world. So to give you an example, I need some new cushions for my sofa. They're not here right now. I need to form a mental picture, a clear mental picture of the cushions I want and I need to start engaging with those cushions using my subjective senses. So I need to feel the texture. I need to notice what it looks like on the sofa. I need to see if I like the color or not. I can put it up to my subjective nose and take a sniff and see if it has any odor to it and so on. I probably wouldn't taste it, but that's how it works. When I do that, I start to feel things. Those emotions are telling consciousness to get my cushion and put it on my sofa. Okay, it's as simple as that. Now, very often when people use things like affirmations or they are telling themselves, I have whatever it is, a new car and such and such and such, the way they feel does not align with what they're saying or thinking. So remember, our emotive thoughts are the things that produce results. You might be telling yourself that you're thinking you have something, but what you're really telling yourself is that you really, really, really want this thing and you don't know how it's gonna happen you're hoping, you're believing, everything else but I have. 
how can you check in on whether on how you feel when you have something well just think about something that you already have take this phone for example i can't hold it up to the camera because i'm using it to record but let's say i was um holding up my camera in front my phone in front of you the way i feel about possessing the phone is very very different to the way i would feel if i didn't have one and i wanted one so when it comes to the things you want does your feeling of wanting that thing that you don't have yet does does your idea of your possession of it align with your feeling towards things you already possess you can throughout the course of today just go around your physical environment and notice your possessions and start to observe your feelings relative to your possessions and then allow your thoughts to drift towards something you want and notice how you feel about the thing that you want you should see that those two feelings those two groups of emotions are very distinct and very different what you want to do is make the thing you want feel to you as something you already has done ready have does okay and you can only do that through engaging your subjective senses at this stage while you are learning the language of emotion there will come a point where you will be able to feel exactly what you want to feel without going through any additional process the techniques of metaphysical prayer manifestation are there to support us and to help us as we work towards that point so use them this helps you to practice the use of the language and eventually you will become fluent in it but for now you need to begin to exercise your gifts exercise your skills engage your subjective senses pay very close attention to what you feel about things because what you feel is going to determine the outcome you get now we are always using this language and the proof is the way we are living now our physical environment the circumstances circumstances and conditions our relationship dynamics and so on the, the way we feel about ourselves and others all of that that is constant communication what we're talking about here is conscious use so that we can be very deliberate about our experience our human experience and then move on to our spiritual experience and so on but for now for today i want you to really consider that your emotions are a language that need to be studied that needs to be studied that needs to be practiced that needs to be learned by you once you do that it's a whole other ball game when it comes to bringing into your physical experience the things that you want thank you for watching in the next clip i think i'll add a little bit more about this and share some uh, new esoteric secrets with you Okay, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or do as you have some of you have been doing, which is to use the contact form on my website, katejogaday.com. Um, I'll leave a link to the website in the description box below. Have a great day. Remember, your emotions are a language. Treat it as you would any language and you will see that it will start to produce results for you in the way that you want. Thanks for watching.